Hey guys, how are you going? So in today's video, I'll be showing you a technique for styling your validation errors for your HTML forms. So as we can see just down here, this is going to be the final result. It's very easy to do and it makes use of the CSS AWTR function. So it's also got some JavaScript uh, so that when you change the input, the error goes away. So very easy to do. Let's go inside this tab right here and begin from scratch. So inside the text editor, this file looks something like this. So firstly, let's do the HTML. So I'm going to be doing the HTML in a way that every single input field has its own container. So let's make a new div here called input dash container. Then inside here, we can put the input. For example, we can say input with a class of input. Okay, so something like this. So input with a class of input. I'm going to say here as the placeholder for this first one, I'm just going to say username as an example. And we can do the same thing here twice more um, for a password and a confirm password. So uh, this is going to be like a, uh, uh, like a sign up form example. Okay, so we can also make these password. So that is all or mostly all for the HTML. Let's save this here and refresh. And as we can see, we get something like this. So now, obviously, in your own situation, your HTML might be slightly different. However, the code I'm going to show you is going to be simple enough. Um, that way you can actually go ahead and uh, modify your code or make slight changes to make it work correctly. But anyway, let's go back inside here and let's go inside the CSS and start styling up the form real quickly. So let's firstly just target the body and give a margin of 20 pixels and also a font family. And let's make this sans serif. Let's now go down and style the input containers. So targeting the input dash container class. Let's give it a margin bottom of 15 px and a max width of 300 px. Let's go down here now and style up the inputs. So for this, we're going to say firstly display and make this block as well as the width of 100%. That way the inputs take up this width right here. We're going to also say padding and we're going to make this 12 pixels and a border of 1px solid then a light gray. We can also say border radius and make this four pixels. Let's now save this and refresh the browser and we get something like this. So I must have forgotten to put a class on the last two elements. So let's go back inside here and just make sure to not do this and make this input and make the type to be password instead. Let's try it again and refresh and we get this right here. So that is basically the former. Now let's move on to the main part of the video and that is going to be the actual errors. So the way this is going to work is we're going to be making use of um, an attribute on the actual input container and then we're going to be using a CSS pseudo class to create an element which displays that error. So let's go back inside here and the way we're going to be uh, essentially detailing an error is by using an attribute called data dash error on the input container. Let's say inside here for this value, we're going to say, sorry, that username is taken. So now this data slash error, this is simply just a data attribute and we've actually made up the error name. So data dash error is a completely custom um, HTML attribute. Okay, so now we're going to be grabbing this value right here and we're going to be outputting it using the CSS and that's literally it for the actual um, displaying of the error. But I do want to go uh, down here real quickly and put a value, for example, decode one, two, three, just to see what it's going to look like. So now let's just save this and refresh. And of course we get this right here. So not, uh, not much has changed, but let's go back inside the CSS now and actually grab this value and display it. So uh, just below this input class, we're going to say right down here, we're going to say input dash container. Oh, you know what? Let's actually move this up to the top just below this one here. So let's go down here. We're going to say dot input dash container. And we're going to say right here using square brackets, we're going to say data dash error. And then we're going to say dot input. So essentially what we're doing here is 
we're selecting every single uh, input, so a class of input down here. We're selecting every single input that is a child element of an input container that contains the data attribute, or sorry, data error attribute. So these squares right here, uh, sorry, these square brackets are for selecting um, attributes on the actual elements. Okay, so now I've actually selected this input when this data error attribute is present. We can now simply go inside here and we're going to be changing up the style of the input. So we can say border dash color and give this a color of C92432. That is a pinkish red. And same goes for the text color. Let's just copy and paste this same color right here. Um, and a background, and this background now is going to be a very, very, very light uh, red. This will be hash FFFAFA, just like that. So now, saving this and refreshing, as we can see now, only for the first input we have those styles applied since it's got that data dash error attribute on the container. And that is halfway there. Let's now display this bottom bit right here where it has the text. So for this, let's go back inside here and do a very similar selector. This one is going to look something like this. So we're going to once again select every single input container with the data error attribute. But this time, we're going to say colon colon after to create a CSS pseudo element. And that is just like a virtual element using CSS. And this element is going to have some content and the content is going to be a double T R. And inside here, we're going to put data dash error. So this is the function I was talking about. Essentially by doing a double T R and putting inside data dash error, it's going to grab the value of the attribute for data dash error and make that the content of the element. So now simply saving this and refreshing gives us this right here. And now we can go ahead and uh, style it just like a regular element. So let's go back inside here and add a few more attributes or properties. We're going to say font size and make this 0.85 EM. So 85% of the current font size. We're going to give it the same red color as above here. So it's going to be hash and then C92432. A display of block and also a margin of 10px top and bottom and 0 for left and right. Saving this and refreshing gives us our final design. It's very simple and straightforward and of course easy to read. So now that is all for the CSS. Um, you know what? Let's do one more thing in the CSS and that's just going to be a slight transition or animation when you um, go back and you remove um, a value but that might come a bit later on. But for now, let's just move on to the JavaScript to actually remove this value. Or sorry, remove the class uh, when you have input. So let's go back inside here and go down to the bottom of the body. And we're gonna be using a script tag right here. We're gonna simply say document.querySelectorAll. And we're gonna say inside here, uh, a class of .input-container with the data dash error um, attribute. So remember to put your square brackets here, okay? Um, then we're gonna say dot input. So basically, we're doing the exact same selector. We're selecting every single input that is a child of the input container that has a error, okay? And for this, we're gonna say dot for each. And then right here, we're gonna have our input element. So we're gonna say INPEL, just like this. And now, of course, INPEL refers to every single input element that has the data dash error, okay? We're gonna say listener, And we're gonna say input. Then we're gonna use um, a, uh, a function here to simply say element. Then we're going to say dot remove attribute and pass in here data dash error. So basically, what we're doing here is we are simply getting the input. Then we are saying when the input gets input, so when you actually type in the input field, uh, we're going to get the parent element being this one right here. And we're going to remove the data dash error attribute. So now saving this and refreshing, we can now see if I was to press backspace here and give the field input. Um, the class or the attribute goes away. So, um, of course, so does our error being displayed. So that's uh, that's how that's going to work. Unfortunately, 
if you're doing your errors uh, asynchronously using JavaScript, then um, you may need to use some sort of extra technique or you might need to add this event listener uh, when the submission comes back. Um, but that's a bit, uh, a bit of a separate situation or problem which I won't be going over in this video. Um, but I do want to go back inside here and just add one more CSS rule and that is going to be for the input. We're going to simply say uh, transition just down here, sorry. So transition, we're going to say background, make this 0.2 seconds and also uh, border at 0.2 seconds. So now it's going to have a nice fade when you actually remove that error. If you look closely right now, if I press an input, it faded away the border and the background. So that is how to style up or a technique for styling up your validation errors. Thanks for watching guys and I'll see you later.